how far this fence is away from the scribe. So if we were to set it exactly one inch, that would allow us to mark one inch uh, parallel lines from the edge on a bunch of boards. So I would take this particular tool and I would roll it till the scribe or the cutter just barely touches the edge and I could scrape a couple times and that would give me a nice perfect scratch mark all the way up and down. So the next tool we have here is an awl. This awl, AWL awl, is kind of like an ice pick, but it's not. It's a sharpened uh, tool with a fatter handle that uh, fits nicely in your hand, and that allows you to um, either scribe with it, you can, you can scratch and scribe with it, um, but in our case in woodworking, we typically will use this for a hinge work. Anytime you're putting a hinge in, a hinge typically has several holes, and you want the screw to go perfectly in the center of that, otherwise it tends to rock your hinge slightly out of place. So we'll poke uh, or put a dimple in right where that center of that hinge goes so the screw goes in the right spot with an awl. Okay, what's next after our awl? That would be a block plane. This little block plane, also sometimes known as an apron plane, is a great little tool for doing all sorts of things. Uh, you could use this to adjust it and chamfer the edge on something. So if you had a sharp edge on a piece of wood, you could just run this over the surface a couple of times until that edge was just barely not sharp. You could keep going until you chamfer a really nice profile in it. Um, this would speed it up if you're trying to round over stuff with sandpaper. The other thing I really like a block plane for that I still use as a carpenter is if I'm working in the upstairs of someone's house, um, I'll cut my molding about a sixteenth of an inch longer than I think it needs to be. And um, then when I take it up and around the stairs and try to not knock all the picture frames off the wall, um, I'll test fit it where it needs to be. And if it's just right, you put it in, perfect, your seams are nice and tight. But if for some reason you need to take off just a little bit more and you did need to take that 16 off, I'll use the block plane out of my apron and I'll swipe the end of the molding until it comes together perfectly instead of taking that molding all the way back out to the saw. Very handy little plane. The next one we have, number 15, would be our jack plane. So a jack plane is a medium-sized plane. This is a number five. Um, number five is the jack plane because it's kind of the jack of all trades. For this particular plane, um, you could do a little smoothing, a little joining with it or flattening of boards, and it will do everything you need, but it won't do anything perfectly. There are better tools for both applications. Um, for example, this is a smoothing plane. It's got a little dusty. This smoothing plane is a little bit fatter, it's a little shorter, so if the board's a little bit contoured, this will follow the contour of the board being shorter, and it will smooth it really nicely. We usually round over the corners of this particular smoothing plane just ever so slightly, whereas a jointer plane, much larger than the jack plane, is designed to ride over all the bumps, slowly shaving off the top of them to flatten the board out. That's why it's called the joiner plane. It helps you flatten things out so you can join them together or glue them together with a nice, tight, flat seam. That would be a number seven. So this number five is the jack plane. That's what you need to know. Number five is the jack, right in the middle. And the short one was a number four. Okay, let's take a quick break. That's page number one. I'll put the second page worth of tools on a second video, okay?